Hello and welcome to the Green Room Podcast. I'm Matthew Bruni and joining me today are two North Texas alums, uh, DJ Draper and JJ Murray. Uh, This is our second take. We had some technical difficulties on the first one, full transparency. Uh, But they are joining me today to talk about the TBT tournament. Uh, Huge, huge deal. I love the TBT tournament. Um, Obviously playing for a million dollars. They started up the Bleed Green North Texas team. Um, Both GMs of of the team and so we'll get into how how all that came about uh the roster um and the tournament outlook but first guys how, how are y'all doing how you doing gj how you doing DJ? i'm doing good i'm doing good i'm happy to see bruni i thought he left us for good when he went to lsu but it's good to have him back caring mm-hmm. about the old faithful mean green baby exactly 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 never never leave uh my roots there you, as when i left there or when i left you know what a year ago it's been a year now um you know you start to care about it more you know when you're in the moment it's like all right i'm just covering this team you know it's like you know it's the beat that i cover and stuff but when you leave it then it becomes like your alma mater more so you know what i mean that's just that's been kind of a change for me but jj what about you how you, how you doing man, i'm doing great man i'm playing i'm i'm honored i haven't seen much about this but it seems like are we the first on this green room pod? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now, That's Colin awesome. and I might do a, uh, a football pod and put it out before, but I'm not sure. So we're deciding that. But yes, you are the first guests. That's for sure. We're going to have, I'm going to plan to get a few more uh, interesting uh, guests on here from North Texas. So uh, we all are the first. It's only right to have a few walk-ons help break in your, your pod. Exactly. exactly. Y'all are setting the culture for this, this podcast. That's, that's the big thing here. Um, <laughs> But yeah, let, let's talk about this team, man. Let's, let's talk about uh, the Bleed Green team. Um, obviously, both y'all played a part in, in building this, but just how, how did it come about? I start with you, JJ. Um, what, what, was, uh, what went through your mind? What triggered this? And uh, how tough was it to get off the ground? So I think for us um, around, I don't remember exactly the year, but it was the first year that, Marshall had an alumni team in and I remember just watching it on TV and you know calling DJ and he was like yeah I'm actually watching it too and we kind of were just talking about all the players they have from Conference USA on their team and we just uh, from then we thought it was a pretty cool idea and obviously we, we still had a few years left to play so I mean we didn't go too much um, further than that but then I kind of let DJ kind of get into how we everything kind of came um into fruition yeah um golly I'd say I really would say a couple weeks after the season ended this year JJ gave me a call and he was like are are we doing this thing and I was like let's do it man let's see if we can do it so we got in touch with the TBT we asked them what the most important factors are to get into the tournament they told us they told us fans they told us uh organization of the team and they told us competitiveness of your roster mm-hmm. so we kind of started at the top with competitiveness of our roster and we just kind of sat down and, and had some brainstorming about who we should go after and we just kind of started knocking on doors quote unquote uh one by one it, we're, we're gonna get in a roster in a second because i have i have a lot of questions and just and it's it's a fascinating roster here um but let, let's talk about the TBT tournament for those who don't know about it. I, like I said, it's a million dollar um, winner take all tournament. So, you know, if you don't get any, anything, if you win a game and lose, you know, win two games and lose, that's kind of the draw of, that, of what people are playing for here. And, I mean, there's going to be 71 players with NBA experience in, in this. I mean, there's, you know, Gemma for has been lighting it up. Um, I what was he playing in China. I think it was, I mean, he's, um, amazing i mean you got some other um high level guys in it uh the elam ending has always been something that people talk about where you know it's unique you had a certain amount of points uh to um score at the end and you play to a number instead of a time what i mean how would y'all describe the tbt tournament just as a whole as a basketball experience and what made y'all kind of drawn to it i guess we'll start with you dj I think the TBT is unbelievable. I really do. And Fran Fraschilla always talks about it, but he says these players that you see in the tournament are usually alumni players and they're actually better than 
what they were in college because they're more mature. A lot of them played overseas, so they've really grown their game. So you get to see them again, but they're even more skilled. They're tougher. They understand what winning looks like. So I think that's the main reason why I love it. And then ultimately, this tournament isn't a life-changing event for a team. You know, it's a million dollars, but really it's just a bunch of guys who love playing basketball. And that's mm-hmm. what they want to do, and they want to represent the team that they're playing for. So that's why I love it. Yeah, and just to kind of piggyback off what DJ said, I think it, it's pretty prestigious just in the fact that, like, over 200 teams – whether it be alumni teams, whether it be like foundational based teams or teams that are representing a certain cause, like over 200 teams apply to play in this tournament. So like to be selected as one of the 64 teams is one, a very hard thing to do. And two, just shows you how important and how serious people take this tournament. And then also it's during a time in the summer where there's not a lot of like major, professional sports going on so not only do you get the exposure of seeing your alumni having a team represented but also getting to see some of your former you know players that you saw come through um, your university um, and along with a few other additions but you get to just see your school on tv during a summer where you know there's not much sports going on yeah no exactly that's why I watch pretty much every year it's just it's all, all, all I have at that point. You know, you find your favorite teams, you can go from there. Um, now, you, you mentioned, D- JJ, you bring up uh, that how, the, how many teams there are that apply to be in this. And um, DJ mentioned that, you know, it's about competitiveness, with roster, it's about fan base, all this stuff. What, like, how did y'all check those boxes and were y'all getting feedback from them? Or was it just like, all right, this is our team, here's our application, you know, and then you waited or just how did that play out? Yeah, so obviously what DJ said earlier, we reached out because before we started this deal, I mean, we didn't, there's, and that's one, another thing to note, there was no guarantee that we were going to get selected to play in this tournament, like none. So for us, it was when, when we reached out to them and kind of gauged their interest, we wanted to see if we had any shot of getting in. And we kind of gave them our pitch, gave them our story, and then from there, they gave us the steps. And so that's where what DJ talked about, competitiveness, reliability, fan base. Um, and so for us, we had to try to leverage each one of those, those deciding factors and match, kind of match that with our story. And then after talking with Mac and, and Ren and getting their um, approval, we kind of just sat down and, you know, we had our story, what we were going to pitch, the recent success we've had the um, of North Texas basketball yeah. and kind of just went from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure the tournament win and, you know, the, even the success last year helped um, get y'all's name out there. Now, DJ, you talk about knocking on doors and figuring out who's going to be on the team. Um, I'm assuming, I mean, I don't know how you – get this group of players because like you said I mean some of them played in North Texas obviously uh you know Zach Simmons Thomas uh did and but then you have to find other players as well what was it like figuring out like all right this guy could be a candidate this guy you know maybe we call him see see if he's interested I mean um I know for instance Murphy Holloway and uh, Shannon Shorter both played in the TBT before so maybe that did something but what, what was that like so when we sat down and started formulating who we wanted to go after, there was one guy that we said, we have to have this guy on our team. We have to. And it was Shannon Shorter. And we wanted to go after him because he's had recent TBT experience. He's a certified professional ball player. And we think that it's a great opportunity for him to kind of give back to the university, which he loves so much. You know, he, there's been multiple times where he's come to practice, come to games, come to our locker room and just, kind of told us what it's like, how to make it to the top um, coming from North Texas. So we knew he'd be a huge asset. And then once we got him locked in, we really just tried to build around him, got some other really good pieces and just went from there. I mean, there was no player that went to North Texas or in the DFW area that we did not take a look at. Uh, It was a lot of long nights, a lot of early morning phone calls from me and JJ. 
not look, not just take a look at, but there's not one of those players we didn't reach out to and offer or gauge interest. We reached out, we reached out to all anybody that you're thinking of in your head right now, Bruni, we probably reached out to. <laughs> I, I I'll, I'll get into a couple a couple of players in a, in a bit here, but I want to talk about y'all y'all's role here because I've I was trying to figure it out. Initially, I didn't know if y'all were playing, and then I checked the rosters and DJ, you're playing right, and JJ, you're you're not correct. I I mean, I mean we we have this conversation probably three or four times a week. I mean, with this thing, if if all the guys that we have that are expected to show up, show up, then we will not be participating. Okay. Okay. So, okay. That's, I was just looking at the roster and I was like trying to figure out how we were doing this. Um, but all right, I want to start with the Bruno, coach. You don't, you don't think JJ played enough, man? He, you, he's been here seven years. You don't think he's, 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 I don't think you're allowed to wear a UNT jersey anymore. If you're JJ. <laughs> yeah. Ren Baker's like, uh, JJ, man, I think you've done enough for this to, you know, just, just sit, take your time with this one, man. Sit, this, rest your knees, man. Your, your knees got to be tired from sitting in a defensive stance the past five years. Just playing, playing all that damn defense. Um, all right. I want to start with the coach because uh, when this was announced, I made a pitch to be the coach and it fell obviously on deaf ears. Y'all did not select me to be the coach. Um, all right, let's just start with that. Why was I not qualified to be the coach here? I have, I have plenty of uh, basketball knowledge here and uh, I, I'm friends with y'all apparently. Like that should have been enough, clearly. <laughs> Jay, go, go ahead. I'll let you take ahead. this reply. Yeah, go ahead. Somebody reply. <laughs> I think what, what we think of a basketball coach, Bruni. You don't think of 5'8", Matthew Bruni, coming up, coaching you? That's crazy. Hey, if, Matt, if Matt can do it at 5'8", you can do it at 5'8". <laughs> I mean, since, look, given, given your, your, your public resume, Bruni, we can only go off some of the things that we've seen you tweet in the past. And we just didn't think that that was going to be good enough for us to be competitive in this tournament. <laughs> all right my tweets are coming I mean, back to bite now not, all right look you're not a fan of, of the charge and we don't have a lot of shot blockers on our team so that may be something that we have to do just that it's not a it's not a good match <laughs> that's a good point actually you know i didn't think about that one all right i'll give you that uh but in, in all seriousness andre shaw director of basketball operations of north texas um i mean what what went uh what went into it? I mean, what's y'all's relationship with him? And uh, just you know, how, how excited is he to to do this? He's he's awesome, Bruni. I mean, he uh he's gonna be unbelievable for us. When we were talking about coaches, we were we were thinking really hard, and JJ said I got the perfect guy, and he kind of brought up Andre Shaw, and I'll let JJ take from here, but I really think he's gonna be good for us. Yeah, you know, I've been fortunate enough to be around him the last year, um, and. You know, he, he is our ops guy, but he's more than capable of being on the court. Um, that was asked of him. And, you know, he spent some time at in JUCO and D2 as an assistant coach. So, you know, he has some in-game experience and he's spent some time training with Tim Martin. And Tim Martin trains a lot of professional basketball players. So we feel like he'll be able to communicate, you know, you know, grown men. So um, we're, we, yeah, we're excited. We think we think he's ready to go and we're going to add some, some guys around him, but you know, he's the, he's the top dog. Yeah. Well, you have my number. If you ever need me, I need an assistant coach, maybe, you know, throw it, throw it out there. Oh, my God, DJ, we will need some rebounders at practice for the guys. So if you want to, <laughs> you're around, if you're around and want to do that. Oh man. We'll get, let's get a, let's get a towel over Bruni's shoulder. Why did why did I invite y'all onto this podcast? <laughs> this is, this completely killed my uh my basketball reputation in, in DFW. Um, all right, the rest of the team here, obviously North Texas recent North Texas fans, well even anyone, well no Shannon Shorter, Jordan Duffy, Thomas Bell, Zach Simmons. Let's start with those four. Um, getting those four on board was it easy? I mean, we already talked about Shannon Shorter. Um, and whatnot, but the other three especially. Well, getting them on, what were the calls like? Did you have to make a sales pitch or anything like that? Um, uh, JJ, go first. Sales pitch for? To get them on the team. To just be like, hey, you know, this is – or was it just like they, they saw your name and they're like, yeah, I'll do it. All right. So, obviously, with the guys that have TBT experience, like their first question was kind of like, are we already in? Like, because they know you have to get a bid. We didn't 
think that, you know, the casual or the North Texas fans that, you know, just kind of heard about the tournament from our launch assumed that we were getting in, but the players had those type of questions for us. But what me and DJ kind of talked about um, in this process was since we are, this is our first year in it, we don't have a guaranteed bid. And then one of the factors is reliability. So that means showing up with who you say you're going to show up with on your roster. We just had to go after guys that were like in, in. So that means ask them like, Hey, kind of told them about our team. We're like, Hey, do you want to play in it? And they're like, yeah, we want to play in it. And we kind of go from there and just, but if not, you can kind of tell some guys are just like, no, I had a long year. I'm banged up. Or we just didn't hear back from some guys or, you know, it was all type of different factors, but, um, we didn't really, I don't think DJ, do we have, did you think we have to, do we have to pitch guys? Man, we didn't have to, the guys on our team, they want to be on our team and we didn't have to pitch them. I mean, I think the easiest pitch was Jordan Duffy. We called him, we FaceTimed him one day and we said, you want to be on the team? He said, I'm in. And then he hung up and that's all that we needed. <laughs> he said, that, I'm in. That was the last play. That was the last play. We thought we were just going to get a, uh, that quick of a yes. in response from but yeah that was fun that's that's hilarious um so zach and thomas were like we'll do it just immediately right up those guys were in awesome thomas, thomas had to he had to get with his agent a little bit make sure because this is his first year kind of going into his professional year so he just wanted to make sure that that was going to be you know option for him and once he found that out i think you've seen his video he 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 kind of went all out and, and got his rings out and remind people. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, so of, of the other players, I'll quickly just go through and name them. Um, obviously going to be big, uh, big parts of this team. Uh, Brandon Jefferson, or forgive me if I, I have the whole roster down here, so I shouldn't forget anybody. Brandon Jefferson, uh, Jason Siggers, Jordan Williams, Murphy Holloway, who I t- like I mentioned has been in the TBT before uh, and window, uh, window Mitchell um, who played at A&M uh, recently. Um, like you said, it's not the tallest team here. Uh, it's, uh, what, what are we looking for as far as style of play? Come on, give me, give me something here, GMs. Uh, what, what's going to be the, go I'm going to answer this question because I'm not coaching the team. <laughs> this is really, this is really a coach Andre shot. I got to get Andre on here now, but, and make but my I'm pitch. telling you when me and when me and JJ sat down to figure out who we wanted on this team. We knew we wanted guys who were going to play hard. We knew we wanted guys who could make shots. And we wanted guys who are 100% committed. So that's what we're rolling with. We don't care about shot blocking. We don't care about anything else. I mean, those are the three things we wanted. 100% committed, play hard, and can make shots. And that's what we went but, after. But at the end of the day, like, we'll, we'll live with the results because what DJ said, all those guys check those boxes. And not for nothing, I'm mean, just looking at – the basic stats obviously it's different situation to situation you got some guys here that can fill it up i mean jason sigurd's putting up 24 a game i'm um, jordan duffy just you know comes off a 19 point per game se- season um we got some some guys i mean brandon jefferson can fill it up so um I- i'm excited to watch from that perspective as well and then you know a lot of pressure you know zach simmons at 610 to fill up but it is a, i'm watching the tbt in year after years and even looking at um, the first round game against uh, Eberlin Drive. Um, nobody out here is sitting, rolling out like, you know, seven footer and a 6'10 guy is like their front court. You know, it's usually like this. It's like a 6'10, 6'8, 6'10, 6'7, and you kind of go from there. And yeah, and there's only five guys that can be on the court at once. And like DJ likes to say, there's only one ball. <laughs> so, True. I mean, we, for us, it, the fun part about this was us getting on the phone with our, you know, our former assistant coaches, Matt or Raj and Maddie B and Re- like, you know, getting on the phone with them, getting their thoughts on our roster as we were kind of going through this, because obviously they have a lot of experience building rosters. And the, the funniest part was like them laughing at us because we're like on their in their shoes yeah. and like they like seeing the value of like having guys that can play multiple positions. Mm-hmm. Don't exactly, you know what I mean? That just are versatile. Yeah. Help win. You kind of, you kind of, once you're building a team, you kind of see 
why that's valuable, you know, because you can do so much with the uh, basketball team. Yeah. Um, all right. I, I, I got to ask here, uh, both Javion and James Reese tweeted eye emojis. Eye emojis. Y'all know y'all are the same age as me, damn near. Y'all know what that means. When I see that, I'm like, all right, we got them. We got them here. Um, now, obviously, their situation with both Javion is obvious and, and Reese are both you know looking to play professionally or whatnot uh was it just like you know this it's it's would be we can't risk our our primes like this or what, what was the situation whoever I'll wants let, to jump in on it i'll let dj All right, go ahead so it, it's really tough because like you said these guys want to play professional ball and depending on the time of the year how their bodies feel where they think their games are it might not, it might not add up, you know, it might not be a good situation for them. And I think that's just kind of what it came down to. Um, you know, they, they said that they were interested, but it was just one of those things that I don't know if that at this point in time, it's the best thing for them to be a part of. Yeah. Um, one more I'll throw out there. Mike Miller is teammates with Zachary Simmons. Uh, was there any, was there any contact with Mike? Yes, there was, I'm Bruni. I'm telling you there was contact with Everyone that you're thinking of, there's been contact with them. Every one of them. I'm serious. And it's just one of those things that, like, Mike just got back from a long season. Yeah. You know, he's got he's got plans. I mean, it's not all ball all the time for these players. So yeah. finding guys who want to compete, it's not because they don't want to compete. It's just because they might have other things going on. So that's where it's it's tough. Yeah. No. Look, Brody, if it was – we talk about this all the time. If it was up to us, we would have rolled out there with all possibly all UNT team if we I, could. <laughs> you know, if we and we could, Bruni, but you know, like, dude, I mean, that just wasn't pop. That just wasn't possible, which you know sucks. But we had to, we had to look at it as of this isn't about one player. This is about North Texas. So we had to, and then for the the TBT sake, we had to have a roster to be considered so we couldn't wait out for anybody we couldn't really do that and so I mean you know we would love to have those guys all those guys you mentioned we would love to have on the team but at the end of the day it's it's not up to us yeah <laughs> those circumstances yeah no I mean I I had to ask because if if I wouldn't have asked I don't think I could have put this podcast out because North Texas fans have been like what the hell am I listening to this for you didn't even ask why Jay why Javion and Reese and Mike aren't on these teams so no it's a good question and it's hard because what we were doing is we were asking players to commit to something that they don't know what it they don't know if we're getting in they don't know what this really means yeah. they don't know really what position they're playing they don't know what type of role they're gonna have and so it's hard and it's nothing personal but it just sometimes doesn't add up for, for some guys it's just not in their best interest no yeah I mean 100 percent. it makes complete sense um in in situations and not for nothing I mean you get um as much as I would love to have an all-star team from North Texas 2016 to 2020 and uh, as well as Shannon Shorter, obviously as much as I would love that it's great to have um you know Murphy Holloway that has TBT experience it's great to have experience a couple like you know 30 plus year olds on here that can bring that grit bring that experience that have played in uh, high leverage games before I feel like that's a great blend y'all I'll give y'all credit here y'all a great blend of ages experiences you know um and different types of players um that on this team so good job this is this is a good first uh, roster y'all y'all put together here so congratulations all I'm gonna and say is that is we'll we'll see you on July 22nd <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. We I might not, might not. My tweets might not, might not. Yo, uh, are, are, are on paper. We all, we we ain't on paper, guys. But we true. we were thoughts, guys. So that's that's what we're hoping to get out of this. It's true. All right, let's talk about let's talk about the Wichita region, uh, which is where y'all be playing. Um, Bleed Green will be playing, and uh, July twenty second to twenty fifth is the regional. Uh, you got a seven seed. Now, I was honestly expecting an eight seed going into just because it's your first tournament i was like i don't know just they're gonna throw them against like overseas elite isn't in this tournament right but i was like they're gonna throw them like overseas elite and it's just gonna be over it's your first tournament like seven seven seeds is good that's really good uh, dj what, what do you think Were you, do you think that's fair i think it's more than fair i mean 
we have an unbelievable team and we've shown great passion as a fan base and organization. But if you look in this Wichita region, you're talking about Everlyn Drive, Wichita State, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas State. I mean, when in the past ever has North Texas been in, you know, the same conversation as all these teams? And now yeah. we have an opportunity to. So I don't care what number I am to the bowl. As long as there's going to be something there for me to compete with, I love it. So we're going to have a good time. Yeah. Any, any, any other thoughts, uh, JJ, on the bracket, seed, how, you know, how that all played out for y'all? I would DJ said, I mean, for us to be associated with that caliber of, you know, opponents and alumni, most importantly, alumni teams to be in those conversations is something we don't think North Texas has ever been able to say, you know, they've been able to be um, in those conversations. And so, yeah, I mean, I think, I think Eberlin or Everlin is pretty close to overseas elite, to be honest, probably to me and DJ think they're a top five team in this tournament. They, they're one of the only couple of teams that have been in it since the very beginning. Yeah. So, this will be their ninth tournament. And so, I mean, it'd be a good challenge for us. I think, you know, it'd be good for us to kick off our TBT um, with this team. Yeah, not not for nothing. I mean, TBT in, in some ways is kind of like a, you play more, you get more experience and they the fan base grows and more people know you. So they maybe move you up to, you know, six, seven, uh, five in, in a couple of years. You know, that, that's how it goes. Um, I did look up Everlyn Drive's like, roster and stuff because you know i'm I, i'm good at my job i'm prepared um <laughs> and uh yeah man this, this team is this team is 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 very very talented so i'm i'm fascinated to watch um like you said july 22nd i'm looking at it right now 1 p.m central time um uh, we got some time until then but i think this was uh good to let people know now the one question i have to end with here is this something you want to continue in years to come or is this more of like a one-year trial or is this like a, you know, we're just going to get these guys here for one year and then, you know, the, wrap it up or h- how do y'all see this going in, in the coming years if, if you want to continue? I, I think, I think this is something special and we're going to do as much as we can to continue doing this every year. Um, JJ touched on it earlier, but this time period is, is when UNT sports is dormant. Mm-hmm. And to have something this special go on a national network um, in front of millions of viewers playing against teams like Wichita State, Texas Tech, Oklahoma State, Kansas State, all these great teams. Everlyn Drive has, I mean, former first round draft picks on their team. Yeah. So just to do that in a time period when UNT's really not been talked about at all, I think it's unbelievable. So we'll do whatever we can to continue this. Um, last thing I'll say about Everlyn Drive. Um, we talked about how talented their roster is even their record in this is nine and six like it's it's so hard to win in this in this tournament I don't think people understand and like just to make a second or third round you see like the the Syracuse team right the Ohio State teams like that have been doing this for years 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 finally start to break through because those early years it was like overseas elite it was like you know the, the big team, like the TMT teams and whatnot. Now we're starting to see some of the alumni teams build that foundation. And I think that's, you know, possibly what y'all, y'all could do here as far as just building it and grow. And, you know, it doesn't have to be all North Texas players. You know, you can have five North Texas players and, you know, build the rest of the roster around them as years come. But JJ, this is something you, you, you want to do in, in the coming years as well? Yeah, for sure. Um, and for us, we know a lot of that is going to be determined on how, you know, respectable we are this year, to be honest. So we're trying to do our best to just focus on this year and make, you know, the biggest run we can and kind of go from there. But, yeah, we've already had, you know, players and and pe- things saying, like, oh, I don't know about this year, but definitely next year and things like that. So, I mean, we know – and then it gives you more time, too, if we are able to – I mean, we, we kind of did all this in like a few a couple months which you know was pretty tough to kind of pack pack in but yeah if we can you know have a not a guarantee but have a good feeling that we'll be able to be in in these next few tournaments I think that's something we'll definitely be interested in yeah I mean I've seen I've gone through the brackets of the past couple years you know there's a lot of I mean 
Everland Drive is one of the only, I think you mentioned it is one of the only teams that was here in like 2014 when it started. Like it 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 rotates, it changes a lot. Um, hell, there's an overtime elite team in it this yeah. year that I, that I have like two um incoming draft players in the 2023 class. It's like this tournament is growing and changing like every single year. So, um, I'm I'm fascinated by it. Is there is there anything else uh, you want to talk about while, while I got you here? Because I, I feel I think I checked everything off my list. DJ, you're you're looking like you want to talk about something. <laughs> come July 22nd. Come support us. Kansas. Some live opportunity. Come support us. Yeah, yeah. Bring bring everybody. Bring everybody. <laughs> we'll we'll take care of you. Y'all y'all come down and come watch us. Okay. Um, <laughs> Brody, you got any advice though? We need some advice on the Elam ending. How do you think we should Jay, play it? DJ, last time I had you had you on a podcast, you gave Colin and I advice about our men's league. Do you remember that? Oh gosh. You, you said you said I think I'm trying to remember what they were off the top of my head. It was like huddle, you know. It yep. was drink Pedialyte. Okay. And it was I don't know what the third one was. But it was something along those lines. Was, uh, so, yeah, we ended up going one and nine in the men's league that year. So your advice was not too helpful, unfortunately. Hey, um, hey, the huddling, you. you know, down you can only huddle so much down 35. I just – Bruni, Bruni, I hear this a lot from Coach Hodge and Coach Reem. It's not about the X's and the O's. What is it about, JJ? <laughs> Hey, Jimmy and the Joes. See, see y'all are G, see y'all are GMs now, so y'all are like, yeah, hey, it's not on us. It's it's the players now. We've done our job. We've done. At our the job. end of the day, if you can't put the ball in the hole, nothing else matters. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. Um, <laughs> we haven't been in the men's league since though. But hey, if it, if we're if we're ever living in the same area code, man, well, we're gonna have a nasty men's league team one day, and y'all will see, <laughs> y'all will see what I what I can do on the court one day. One day it'll happen. Oh, man. We but, know what it's like to recruit some players, so we hope you reciprocate it like we did. Of course. <laughs> um, but, yeah, no, I don't have any advice, man. This is going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. Like, I've watched a lot of TBT in, you know, the past eight years. Like you said, there's not a lot going on, so it's kind of just like, hell, I'm, I'll watch this. I'll watch. Hey, um, now I have a dog in the fight, Bernie. Exactly. Now we have, now we have a dog in the fight, and uh, I'm excited for it. July 22nd, 1 p.m. Central Time. Wichita region, um, you know, North Texas already beat uh, Wichita State once this year or once last year. And so uh, we'll see if they can um, come out the region again. But, guys, uh, thank you all for joining me, man. This was a lot of fun. We'll, we'll have to do this uh, again sometime. Brody, before we get off, you're, you're not you're, – you're a fan, right? Are you going to be critiquing our team in this tournament? Yes, 100%. 1,000%. Just so we know what to expect because we don't want to get on there and be like – Man, JJ and DJ don't know how to put together a team. <laughs> no, that's no that nobody's safe right now, man. If I if I see it, I'm tweeting it, man. This is North Texas. This is still uh, just a uh, tangent, but obviously a lot of my followers are still North Texas fans. So it's like every time I tweet about North Texas, like you know, a couple of times here and there, it's like they're my most liked stuff. And so it's just like, all right. Now we have North Texas podcast back. We're bring we're we're back, uh, rebranded and everything, and we got y'all on to start it, man. This is this is great. So, um, yeah. man, thank <laughs> thank y'all for joining me. Um, we'll do this again soon. Uh, if y'all listening on the podcast, leave a five star rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe. Um, yeah, man, we'll, we'll have these guys like do our intro. Remember, DJ, you remember when you did the intro for us a couple years ago? I still got it. You had me send you like five different versions with like more energy, less energy shorter longer i mean yeah yeah we were editing D dj's intro that was great um all right guys uh we'll, we'll talk we'll talk again soon